Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this lecture, we will take a look at Chapter 25, Capital Budgeting and Managerial Decisions. So we're going to take a look at capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is the process of analyzing alternative long-term investments and deciding which assets to acquire or sell. So we're going to take a look at those big decisions that uh, management has to make and think about how to make those decisions. These are the decisions that are going to take a lot more time to make because of these various factors that we'll talk about being involved in them. So capital budgeting uh, decisions require careful analysis because they are usually the most difficult and risky decisions the managers make. Specifically, a capital budgeting decision is risky because so they have outcomes that are uncertain. So whenever we're talking about into the future, we're talking about these decisions that are, gener are used to help us to generate long-term revenue, usually uh, involving capital in the short term, in the here and now, in order to generate revenue in the future. And of course, the future is uncertain, so we're going to have that uncertainty factor all the time when we're talking about this type of decision. Large amounts of money are usually involved. So when we talk about capital decisions, we're talking about putting a large amount of money down generally now in order to get a return on it in the future. And of course, that by its nature is risky. Decisions may be difficult to or impossible to reverse. Once the capital investment has been made now, if there's changes into the future, if we have unpredicted something or haven't predicted well, then it's going to be hard to reverse that decision in the future. Investments involve a long-term commitment. So a large capital investment, like buying a building or, or a new piece of equipment that is very large, of course, is a long-term investment that's uh, it's going to take more decision on time to make that decision. Okay, payback periods. The first type of thing we'll take a look at when trying to assess this, these types of decisions. And the payback period is the investment is the amount of time it takes a project to recover its initial investment. So when we put this money down, the first question that we could ask in terms of is this a good investment is how long will it take for me to get paid back the money that we are putting down in order to do this. So the payback period would just be the cost of the investment then, the initial amount that we're putting down for buying a piece of equipment at cost 80000 It's the 80000 we're putting down divided by the annual net cash flow the cash flow provided by this investment, meaning when is this investment going to pay itself off, pay itself back. Managers prefer investing in projects with shorter payback periods. Obviously, the shorter the payback period, meaning the shorter amount of time in which it will be for us to get our money back, the less risky the investment and therefore the more favorable the investment will be. Uh, computing payback period with even cash flows. So fast track is considered buying a new machine that will be used uh, in its manufacturing operations, the machine costs 16000 and is expected to produce annual net cash flows of 4100 The machine is expected to have an eight-year useful life with no salvage val value. Calculate the payback period. So the easiest way to do that is just going to take the cost of the investment. We're going to put down 16000 It's going to generate 4001 per pay period. So that will take 3.9 years before it has basically paid itself, before it's been paid back uh, to the payback period. Now, of course, this is a very simple, you know, rough estimate of the payback period because there is also the time value of money that's not being considered in this type of analysis. But if we just want a quick analysis that could give us some good relevant information, this is a quick calculation that it could often be used. So computing payback period with uneven cash flows. So in the previous examples, we assumed that the increase in cash flows would be the same each year. Now, let's look at an example where the cash flows vary each year. So computing payback period with uneven cash flows. So Fast Tracks wants to install a machine that costs 16000 and has an eight-year useful life with zero salvage value, annual net cash flows. So now we're saying that we did a more detailed analysis and we're saying, well, it's not just going to be an even cash flow back each year. It's going to have an expected cash flow that will change uh, in each year. Net, net cash, expected cash flows, uh, cumulative cash flows. We're going to add these up. So obviously we've got the 16 down the 16 down we're going to get 3000 year one bringing the negative cash up to 13 and then we've got the four bringing the negative cash to nine and so on and so it looks like the payback period uh, ends up happening sometime in year five so to get the payback period when we have unequal uh, annual net cash flows we must add the cash flows each year until the total equals the cost of the investment payback period 4.2 years so uh, pay, using the payback period, the payback period has two major shortcomings. It ignores the time value of money and it ignores uh, cash flows after the payback period. So once again, the payback period is a really good analysis 
a, a really quick analysis to get a really quick assessment in terms of what types of decisions we should make. We then may want to go to a more detailed analysis uh, when we narrow down our choices because the payback period does not take into account the time value of money, meaning that uh, money received in the future is worth less than the money now. Why? few reasons. One, there's inflation, so that the value of the dollar goes down. And two, there's there's the opportunity cost of the money. We, If we weren't putting it here, we could put it somewhere else. If we could get a return somewhere else of 10%, and we're only getting a return here of you know 8%, then that needs to be taken into consideration. Also, when we're talking about the payback period, we're talking about how long does it take to get paid back. But what we really want to think about is uh, how much is this investment going to make us meaning it's still going to if it's still going to be generating us money after the payback period that's significant to our decision making and we should have that into a more detailed calculation so consider the following example where both projects cost 5000 have a 5 year useful life so this is a pretty kind of crazy example but it does de it demonstrates the point here meaning that this payback period is is of course going to be shorter but if in in this one of course year 5 we've got this huge return of one million dollars and if that were actually to happen after the payback period then of course that would be relevant <laughs> to our decision making and we would probably go with the with the project with has this one million dollar payback even though uh, the payback period here would be shorter again most examples wouldn't be that extreme but that's the kind of a thing that that we're talking about here